Picture it. 33 AD or thereabouts in the pre-dawn hours of a graveyard somewhere in Jerusalem. Women have arrived to anoint the body of Jesus only to find the stone rolled away from an empty tomb. The gospel writer says they were perplexed, but with the help of two strangers, they recalled Jesus' words that pointed to his resurrection. And then our text concludes with a couple of troublesome verses about what happened when they shared that information with the rest of the disciples. So if you'll indulge me, I'm going to digress for a minute in order to deal with those verses. We read that the men, being men, concluded that the women's account was not to be believed because it was no doubt based in hysterics. At this point, the disciples aren't looking so great. And then we have the next verse, which it so happens doesn't appear in many ancient texts. That verse tells us that Peter hightails it to the tomb to see for himself, stoops down, looks into the tomb, sees the linen clothes, and goes home. Now, if this sounds familiar, it's because it's very close to the account given in John's Gospel, the last of the Gospels to be written dozens of years after Luke's Gospel. And so if I were to make a guess, I would guess that editors copying a version of John's Gospel later added this verse into Luke's Gospel in an effort to redeem the naysaying appearance of the men. The bottom line is there wouldn't likely be an Easter account had it not been for the witness and words of the faithful women. The men would not have known what happened at the gravesite were it not for the women. But you and I know what happened, don't we? And there is plenty of artwork to clarify all the details. Almost all the paintings with which you and I are most familiar depict Jesus, whether scantily clad or fully robed, rising into the air sometimes with unconscious guards fainted dead away in fear, littering the ground like so many fallen leaves. That's pretty much the way Christian artists have depicted the event over the centuries, or at least the artists of Western Christianity. Because you see, when Christianity split into the East and the West in 1054, each of them lost a piece of the puzzle. Now hold on to that thought while I take us all the way back to the beginning of time. In Genesis chapter 2, we are given the story of how God created from the dust of the earth, or Adama in Hebrew, a non-binary, gender-neutral being called Adam, since its origin was from Adama. Over time, we have westernized and pro the pronunciation of Adam into Adam. But as the story goes, God ended up performing some surgery on that non-binary being, giving rise to the first man and woman. Unlike what we have been taught, it wasn't first man and then woman. It was a non-binary creation of God from which came a man and a woman. And so men would forever be separated from the feminine part of themselves that once had been a part of Adam and women would forever be separated from the masculine part of themselves that had also been a part of Adam. Each of them lost a piece of the puzzle when Adam was split into male and female. That's what happened when Christianity split into an Eastern and Western faction. They each lost an essential part of the whole that up until that point 
had been Christianity. And one of the lost pieces was that the West saw the resurrection as individualistic. Western art often shows Jesus walking alone out of the tomb and Western theology declared Jesus rose from the dead as an individual. And that theology has influenced how we describe our relationship with Jesus. I invite Jesus into my heart. I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. And so Western Christians have come to see their relationship with Jesus as a personal one. But that's not the way the Eastern Church saw the resurrection. The Eastern Church saw it as a communal event. In Eastern Christian artwork, Jesus' resurrection is one in which he is pulling Adam and Eve, symbols of all of humanity, out of their own tombs. Bible scholar John Dominic Crossan writes, the West lost and the East kept the original Easter vision. But I like Father Richard Rohr's description that both Eastern Christianity and Western Christianity tried to breathe the air of the gospel with only one lung. In Luke's gospel, the women went to anoint their personal friend and rabbi, but he wasn't there. In fact, within the account of the resurrection, as well as with, within Mark's gospel, Jesus makes no appearance in the graveyard. He's nowhere to be found because he is on the loose. Instead of hanging around tombs, waiting on individuals to show up so that he can be in a personal relationship with them, he is found roaming the countryside, pulling people from their own tombs of despair, fear, and ignorance. In fact, the verses immediately following today's text, he catches up with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. In other words, Jesus is not shown to be a personal savior of the apostles in Luke's gospel, but instead a savior of all sorts of folks, pulling them and each of us out of our own tombs of despair. Ours are the tombs of misogyny, racism, transphobia, and homophobia, which smother the souls of their victims. Tombs of powerlessness that the elderly feel as they age. Tombs of loneliness that can suffocate the spirit of a person confined to a nursing home. Tombs of shame that forever alter the one who has been sexually molested. And tombs of grief that close in on the person who has lost a loved one. All of us are in need of an Easter event in which Jesus reaches inside our tombs and draws us out from the hells that have kept us in chain. Not a one-time only event, but one that pulls us from our hopelessness over and over. The problem with Western art and Western theology is that we have come to see Easter as a commemoration of something that took place 2,000 years ago. We see it as a one-time miracle that proved Jesus was God. And we see it as an event that primarily impacts only our own life. I, for one, want to give myself permission to move beyond that image by recognizing the value of Eastern Orthodox Christianity's view of an ongoing Easter in which Jesus emerging victorious over death pulls all of us with him from the grips of our hell. When I do that, then Easter is no longer just seen as the anniversary of something that took place long ago. Instead, Easter becomes something that is ongoing. It's less a story about an empty tomb as it is one about transformed lives. The story isn't finished yet. You and I are invited to experience resurrection and new life on a daily basis. 
And that's definitely good news. Not just for me, but for everyone. The resurrection is not a single event, but a loosening of God's power and light into the earth and history. One that continues to alter all things, infusing them with the grace and power of God's own holiness. It's as though a door was opened and what poured out will never be stopped and the door cannot be closed. So happy Easter, everyone. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen.